fight is so important. It actually can tell us where we're going so we don't bump into objects. And computers with machine learning are able to do so many things and learn so fast without getting tired or hungry. But, but they can't see. And that's where convolutional neural ne networks come into play. Convolutional neural networks work by taking a feature from an image and breaking it down, trying to find where the edges of an image may be to start. And then it combines those edges to make a shape. And then it may recognize that shape as something like a leg or a wheel. And if it's a leg, it could classify something as a frog, for example, and a wheel as a car. Essentially, how we can find edges is that we take one specific pixel and the grayscale value of the other pixels surrounding this, usually a three by three. And then we have a filter comprised of ones, zeros, and negative ones. These are arranged in certain ways to create horizontal or vertical lines. And using those nine pixels we zoomed in on, we can also use a kernel and apply that to the pixels. And this can help us locate edges. By multiplying ones and negative ones to an image, if colors are very similar, it will input a low number. For example, if all the pixels of those nine were the same, then it would input 49 and negative 49. Then we would later add these pixels and it would just give us a zero. Whereas if it's an edge, there may be a difference between black and white or different colors, which would give us a high differential. We can use this to locate features. This is essentially what a convolutional neural network does. After we use a convolutional neural network, we'll usually add a max pooling layer so that we could take the key features from each part of an image and, and reduce the amount of time it takes to train something while still keeping the important information. So now let's go through the actual code. I start by importing some important libraries such as TensorFlow and Keras, which is what I'm going to be using. Uh, I also use uh, matplotlib, which is, allows us to like plot certain things uh, and images. And that's basically it. Um, then we have to import the data. So we set uh, tra train images and train labels and then test images. So train images is so that we can train the network and test it so that we can test the network. And we need to save these test images because then it's something new and we make sure overfitting doesn't occur. And then we also divide these by 225 to get them into a number between zero and one instead of something that could be like 123, for example. Uh, next, we label the class names. So there's nine types, 10 types of photos in here, sorry. We have airplanes, automobiles, birds, cats, deers, dog, frog, horse, ship, truck. So it's actually quite a bit, but to make sure that our data set is actually imported, I ran the simple uh, plot function to plot the first 25 images. And if we just run this, it should plot the first 25 images with their labels. Very pixelated, but you can kind of make out what they are and you have the labels underneath. Uh, next, we actually get into the real network of this. So we have our model, which is a model.sequential, very common model, and we use the convo convolutional networks. So essentially what's going on in here is we start with an input shape, which is 32 by 32. Uh, so that's its height and width. And then we have three color chan three channels, just channels. And usually our channels can be depicted by this number right here. Uh, so our channels, usually our height and width decrease as we go on and our channels increase. So it could go to 32, then 64, for example. We also use an activation function called ReLU. And basically what ReLU does is anything below zero, it just converts it to zero. So we don't have to deal with any negatives. Anything above zero stays that way. So that way we can really focus on the important information, which is what's above zero and the probability of uh, that image being th uh, having that type of label. After the convolutional network, we add a max pooling, which essentially takes the most important features, as I mentioned before, from the image while reducing the size so it doesn't take that long to train. Uh, then we add another convolutional network so we can identify even further features and make connections between things like edges. And uh, again, a max pooling and a final convolutional layer. Next, we'll use a flatten layer. So 
if I just run this right here, uh, we just get a warning that TensorFlow is coming in. And then if I just add a model dot summary, we can show what the models are essentially doing. And so here we could see uh, essentially what's happening with the output shape. So after you put the input shape in once, you don't have to list it again. And here we can see the amount of parameters, which is basically the weights and biases that are changing. And uh, here we have a flatten layer, which basically flattens the image. So instead of having 32 by 32 by three, it'll just become one number. Uh, and if we can run this and add another model.summary after that, uh, then we can exactly see the number of inputs, outputs, sorry. So that would essentially be 32 times 32, which will equal 1024. And then we also have a dense layer with another activation of ReLU. And finally, a model, uh, finally a last dense layer with 10. Uh, this would be 10 neurons because there's 10 possible outputs. And we don't actually use ReLU as our activation function. Instead, we're using softmax because it's for probability and softmax is uh, better for probability distribution. So the probability of this image being that, that's when you want to use a softmax. Next, we get into improving our system. So we use a optimizer. This one's called Atom. And essentially, the optimizer and loss work to take whatever we had before. So our what our model predicted and take the actual answers and calculate the loss. And we can measure this in accuracy. And that's the main thing we're going to be looking at when we print it uh, or when we test it. And then finally, this model.fit will test using the train images. And then we also have, uh, we're running it for 15 epochs. So if we just run this, it'll take a bit of time, uh, but it's training on essentially 5,000 samples. And we can see the accuracy. It's actually starting off really low, but it's also taking a while to train. So I'll see you right back when it's done training. One hour later. So as we can see here, the model is done training and we have an accuracy on the tests on the train data of 78%, which is actually uh, pretty good. And our VAL accuracy is 71%. Uh, your VAL accuracy is usually below your accuracy. And this is a good thing to see because if our VAL accuracy was too close to our accuracy, that would probably, uh, or if it was too far away from our accuracy, that would probably mean our model is overfitting, which is essentially just cheating its way and finding coincidences in different images instead of actually learning how to depict the features in an image. So when uh, this is relatively close to the actual accuracy, that means we haven't overfitted. And some ways to prevent overfitting are adding layers like dropouts. Um, then we can here, we are just gonna plot uh, our val accuracy and accuracy. So as we can see here, uh, we have our accuracy and our val accuracy. And because we don't see a big delta split, that means we did not overfit, which is pretty good. And then we can finally print our test accuracy right here, uh, which is 71% test accuracy. Okay, so finally what I did to make sure my uh, code actually ran properly is I plotted the first five figures for the uh, test data. So we can see we have a cat, a ship, a ship, airplane, and frog. They're pretty blurry, but I also used a model.predict and use the npargmax, which basically takes all the values and finds the highest probability out of the 10 possible options. And we can see them each labeled here. So I'm testing number two and number two is a ship. So that should produce ship, which is equal to eight. And here we have number eight, which means the uh, convolutional neural network did successfully uh, label the image. There's so many things you could do with convolutional neural networks. Anything of an image that you need to classify, you can basically insert convolutional neural networks here. For example, detecting different types of cancers. There was even a new article based on using image classification and using recurrent neural networks to add captions to those images. There's Microsoft AI has also been working 
on using image classification to detect and gather data about the number of species there are in the wild. Giving the computers the ability to see is so important and it opens up so many more doorways. It can influence other types of neural networks like GANs and recurrent neural networks. And it's really something that opens up our eyes.